Welcome back to the channel, everyone. I've got a real quick one here for you today on the LS Cutlass build. I was actually out here doing a couple other things in the barn and I wanted to take an opportunity to show you how to replace the camshaft position sensor on this and as well describe exactly what is happening with that sensor while it's working. Let's get to it. All right, our engine obviously is out of the engine bay. If you're trying to do this while the engine is inside the engine bay, you're gonna have a lot more things on here to take off. All of your intake stuff, all of your vacuum lines, your electrical connectors, and your fuel rails. You can either take your fuel rails off directly, fold them up and over, or disconnect the lines that are coming into them. And then you're gonna have some vacuum lines attached back here. We'll start with the 10 bolts that hold down the intake to the cylinder head. Before we do that, we've loosened all four of the bolts holding in the fuel rail, just to give us a little extra clearance while we take it off. We'll spin the rest of these bolts out, then we'll get this intake up and out of the way. With the intake now out of the way, you can see we've got our pan with our two knock sensors installed, and that is what this electrical harness hanging out here is. We see the ports for the intake are in good shape. Just a little 10 millimeter bolt is the only thing holding that camshaft position sensor in. Let's take it out. Bolt out, we'll take a small tech driver, get it underneath the flange. And as we give it a gentle pull upward, we just pry it up a little bit. And here's what the camshaft position sensor looks like on this 2006 LS engine. New sensor is loaded up and just about ready to go back in. But how these actually work, they're called a Hall effect sensor. And in here is a magnetic type material. And on the camshaft itself is a splined item. You can see that in the picture right there. And when that camshaft turns, you're gonna see those depressions will show up as waves as this goes through. And most likely there's gonna be one location that has a different depression or a different rise in it, allowing the ECM to know where that specific cylinder is. And it's usually set on top dead center to identify those. That way when this space comes into contact with the Hall effect sensor, it'll tell us that cylinder number one is in it's getting ready to fire order. You can see in here is a three wire, uh, your A, B, and C. Your A is generally going to be your positive, your five or your 12 volts in. You have your ground and then you have a five volt reference coming out from your C. So if you wanted to check it while it was in the vehicle and cranking, you would want to go from your ground and your B terminal to C to see what the effects is on your meter or your power probe. All right, got a little copper high temp lubricant here. Recommend putting it directly onto the O-ring itself and then get it all over you and everything else in the process. Once it is lubed to its entirety, just simply right back down in the slot where the old one came out of. A little pressure to seat it. Now everything in reverse, putting in the bolt here, torquing down the specs for your end. We'll have that posted below in the description exactly what those torque specs are for this particular intake valve. Well, that is gonna do it now for us on the install of this camshaft position sensor. We've got the fuel rails bolted back down. We've got the intake torque to spec now. Uh, in this video, we briefly walk through how a Hall effect sensor works. Uh, if you wanna check out a little more in depth on how those function, click the link right here. We also installed the camshaft position sensor, a new one, just to make sure that this was beating on all cylinders when we went to first fire it up. 
Next time we're gonna flip this engine upside down and then we're actually gonna replace the oil pan to make sure that it's able to clear that cross member in the cutlass. Thanks for watching, until next time, we'll see you then.